Hi, my name is Macaulay, and today we're going to be talking about phishing scams. All right, so first of all, let's get this out of the way. What are phishing attacks? Now, as I said, phishing attacks are one of the most prominent online cybersecurity threats. Phishing scams are a type of social engineering scam where an attacker impersonates a trusted individual, company, government entity, or organization in order to scam you. Now, the most common way we may think of phishing is phishing emails, but phishing can actually also include messages on email, text, phone calls, and even internet pop-ups and websites. But today we're gonna to be focusing on phishing emails, text messages, and websites more in depth. So phishing emails often direct victims towards a link or an attachment. Now, when it comes to phishing emails, the tactics are usually the same, but the story does change. Now you might receive a phishing email one day from someone pretending to be Facebook, saying your password needs to be reset, and you may receive an email the next day from PayPal saying that your account has been compromised. But regardless of the story, the signs should always remain the same. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a bit about email, a bit about text, a bit about websites, and then we're gonna go through how you can actually spot when a message is a phishing message. So phishing emails. When we receive phishing emails, these emails will often direct us towards some sort of link or even an attachment. These links may direct you to a fake website, so a phishing website, where they'll ask you to input sensitive information. And attachments may contain malware designed to steal your data. Now, smishing emails, so SMS phishing, this is text message phishing, are also increasingly common. Like in the emails, scammers send messages pretending to be trusted individuals or companies, Oftentimes, oftentimes they'll pretend to be the postal service or the IRS or the police or even a friend. In these scams, they'll usually either ask you to click on a link, just like in emails, or they may ask you to call a phone number. Now, phishing websites are where phishing links often lead you. So if you get an email or you get a text message and it asks you to click on a link, this is where you'll be led to. So phishing websites are malicious websites designed to look and replicate real websites. Once you're on the website, the website will ask you to provide sensitive information, either login information or other details, things like your address, phone number, and date of birth. So these three things, phishing emails, texts, and websites often lead to the phishing cycle. So in the phishing cycle, this generally is what happens. An attacker will send a phishing message, right? So a text message or email. This may also be, like I said, a pop-up on your browser. In many cases, the message is asking you to click on a link. And so you'll click on a link and you'll end up visiting a fake website. Once on the website, you'll be asked to input sensitive information. You'll input it thinking you're putting it into just a normal trustworthy website. The hacker will collect that important information and then use that information to access other private information, perhaps to access your social media accounts, email account, or even your financial accounts. Now, the reason this is a cycle is that when it comes to phishing, if you're victimized once, you're more likely to be victimized again. The second you interact with a phishing scam, the hacker immediately knows that you are an easier target. So they'll continue to try to scam you, perhaps in the same way or in new ways. This is why it's really important to not engage in phishing scams to any degree, but we'll talk more about that in a bit. So just a bit of a recap and to put things in plainer terms. Phishing scams often come in the form of email, text messages. They can even come in the form of pop-ups, websites, and phone calls. When it comes to scams, the number one thing is you always wanna be suspicious of any sort of unsolicited communication. Again, whether that's a text, call, email, or pop-up. If you didn't directly seek it out, be suspicious. You also wanna be aware that hackers can be really sophisticated, making emails and websites look like the real thing. Phishing scams of the early internet were easily spotted, right? They told stories about Egyptian princes who wanted to give away their fortune to you. Current phishing scams can be really intricate and hard to spot. Scammers will make exact duplicates of websites and make emails look legitimate. Even caller IDs can be spoofed, making a phone number look like it's a different phone number. 
So here are a few little things you can look out for in any sort of messages you receive, again, either text messages or emails to spot phishing. And then after this, we'll actually go over a few examples to show how this works. So first of all, when it comes to emails, either the domain is a public domain or it's mismatched. Meaning if you're receiving an email from PayPal, but the email is username at gmail.com, we know that message is not from PayPal. PayPal will always use an at paypal.com email account. The hackers may be a bit more sophisticated and they may create an email domain that looks really close to paypal.com. Maybe it's paypal.com, but it's two L's at the end of pal instead of one. So we really want to pay attention to where the email is coming from. Now, one thing to look out for is if it's poorly written or contains poor grammar. Now, again, this is becoming less common as hackers use things like AI and chat GBT to make their messages more convincing, but we can still spot this from time to time in their messages. The messages often feel generic. This is because scammers are sending out thousands, if not millions of these messages. And again, the use of things like chat GBT or other AI makes the messages just have that sort of AI feel where they feel generic and sometimes stiff. The messaging is often urgent and sometimes threatening. So the email may be saying that you won some sort of prize, right? So it may not necessarily be threatening, but it will be urgent, right? Click now in the next 24 hours to claim your prize. Or it may be from a social media account saying that if you don't take action now, your account will be shut down in the next 24 hours. Again, when it comes to text messages or emails, you may have suspicious links or attachments. And when you have those things, there'll be some sort of strong suggestion to click on them. So it may contain a big button that says click here or use language like you must download the attachment. So look out for a strong push to engage in any sort of link or attachment in these messages. And again, this also applies to calling some sort of phone number they may have provided. All right, so let's take a look at this email from PayPal. So let's think about some of the things that we just talked about that we want to watch out for. So first of all, when I receive an email, I'm going to first look at, so first of all, when I receive an email, I'm going to first look at the email address. So right away, if I look at the email address at the top of this email, I can see it's coming from services at paypal-accounts.com. Again, this is pretty close and may look convincing, but any emails from PayPal will be coming from at paypal.com. There won't be any sort of dashes or any additional words in there. Now, once I start reading the email, I right away am seeing some grammar issues. So in the first sentence, your PayPal account is limited, comma, you have 24 hours to solve the problem, right? And they capitalized that you, even though it's the same sentence. And in the second paragraph, another weird grammar thing, we are sorry to inform you that you no longer have access to PayPal's advantages like purchasing and sending and receiving money, right? We normally wouldn't use two ands, we would just use a comma and then and at the end. And then again, another thing in the next paragraph, why is my PayPal account limited? We believe your account is in danger from unauthorized users. Write that sentence. We believe that your account is in danger from unauthorized users. Isn't necessarily wrong, but it just feels chunky, right? It's not well worded. And then lastly, what can I do to resolve the problem? You have to confirm all of your account details on our secured server by clicking the link below and following the steps, right? The urgency has been throughout the email, but here it is in its most obvious form. You have to confirm all of your account details, and then they'll direct you towards that link as expected by clicking the link below and following the steps. So right, this email looks pretty good. The logo is correct, the color palette is right, the font seems okay. There are grammatical things, but they're not so glaringly obvious. But all of these things put together, the email domain, plus the grammar stuff, plus the sense of urgency, lets me know that this is a phishing email. All right, let's now look at a phishing text message. So. In this message, we're going to be directed to call a phone number rather than click on a link or download any sort of attachment. So let's read it. Warning, Criminal Investigation Division. IRS is filing lawsuit against you for more information. Call on and then the phone number. 
on urgent basis. Otherwise, your arrest warrant will be forwarded to your local police department and your property and bank accounts and social benefits will be frozen by government. So wow, so many grammatical errors here, right? And so much urgency. That put together with the fact that the IRS is never gonna text you as their formal way of communicating right away tells me that this is a phishing scam, right? You're never going to be informed of your potential arrest through text message. We know we're more online now, but we haven't gotten this far yet. And lastly, let's look at a phishing website. So here is a phishing website. So you may have received an email, say from Facebook, and they say, hey, someone tried to log into your account. We don't think it was you, but please log in here to confirm that it was not you. So you click on the link and it takes you here. And this looks really legitimate. They've copied the website very well. But the first thing that I notice is that the URL is wrong. The URL reads h1.facebook.com. So I'm not on facebook.com, I can already see that. Secondly, they're using an outdated logo here. This is no longer the Facebook logo. If you go to the real website, you can see what the real logo is. But otherwise, this site looks pretty good. That's how well scammers can copy websites. The good thing is, is that they are not currently able to spoof URLs. So you can always check the URL to make sure it's the correct URL. All right, hopefully now you feel a bit more prepared to spot a phishing scam, but that doesn't mean you're gonna stop getting them. So what do you do when you receive a phishing email? How should you handle it? So first of all, do not interact with the email. Now you're not in danger if you open the email or open the text message, but the second you interact with it is when you put yourself at risk. So do not click on links, do not click on attachments, and do not respond even if you feel tempted to respond telling someone to screw off. Don't do it, do not engage. Because even if you don't fall for the scam fully, the second you engage, the scammer sees that as a sign to keep pursuing you. Once you know it's a phishing message, if it's an email, mark it as junk. Don't just delete it. You want to train your email to know that messages like this should go directly to your spam folder so you don't have to see them. If it's a text message, block the number. If it's a phone call, hang up. If it's a phone call on your cell phone, hang up and block the number. And if you're online and you get a pop-up, leave the website. So that's a bit about phishing, how you can spot it and what to do if you do get some sort of phishing message. But one thing I haven't mentioned yet, and I think it is the number one tip you can take when it comes to phishing, is trust your gut. If something feels off, don't engage. All right, if you have any more questions about this topic, you can always call Cyber Seniors toll free at 844-217-3057 or visit us online at cyberseniors.org.